Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. So last month, Corality made a change to the 4.2.2 boards that are commonly found in like the Ender 3s, Ender 3 Pros, uh, etc. Uh, basically changing the CPU from 512K to 256K. Uh, this change came out last month and it started to cause some confusion. So I wanted to cover how to identify which chip you have, what that actually means for you, and if you're building your own firmware, uh, what one you actually have to go with. One thing that's not clear is if they're going to do the same thing with the 4.2.7 boards. Um, I guess it's a possibility. I don't know if they're doing it to save costs or because of the chip shortage in general due to COVID. Uh, but if they end up doing that, I will let you know. It is worth noting that in most cases, you're not going to notice the difference between 512 and 256K chips. It's really just the amount of memory they have. So if you're running stock or if you're only making a couple mods, uh, you're not going to really have any issues. It's if you're really trying to heavily mod your printer that you might come into some uh, limitations. And at that point, you might be looking to switch to a different board anyways, like the SKR Mini or one of those types of boards. With that said, what I'm going to do in this video is show you how to identify what CPU you have. If you purchase your printer before January of 2022, uh, you'll have the 512K chip, uh, so that's easy to identify. Um, but if you purchase it this year, you're going to want to actually take the printer apart a little bit and actually look at the chip to see which one you have. And I'll cover that process here in a second. And then I'm also going to jump over to Marlin and show you the difference between the older versions of Marlin and the newest ones on the bug fix line where they introduce the multiple options if you're using the Marlin auto build plugin. Well, even if you're not, you still have to know which one to actually choose for the environment variables. All right, so with that, before we get started, if you haven't already, um, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe. It'll really help circulate this video and help the channel grow. And let's go ahead and jump over to the printer. All right, guys, here I have my mostly stock Ender 3. I'm gonna use this one for the example. Um, in order to get to the board, you have four screws you have to take off. There's one here, which I already have off, and then three on the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and take those off really quick and open it up and show you what it look. All right, so I'm trying as hard as I can here to get a good picture of the chip. Uh, it's just kind of difficult with the zoom and the light, uh, but I have a decent one here. When you're looking here, about the third line down, second or third line down, if you see RET, you have the 512K chip, which is what was shipped with all the printers that were built before January of 2022. If you see RCT6 here, you have the 256K chip. Now, it's important to note that while technically uh, most of the time, uh, the 512K build will successfully push to the 256K chip. Um, you can run into issues with it. And then there has been reports with like the SKR minis where people were pushing the 512K to it and things like the uh, heating elements and stuff would stay on because it ran out of memory to shut it down. So you do risk uh, potential issues around safety and uh, I mean, there's been only a few cases, but there has been cases of fire and stuff as a result of it. Uh, so just keep that in mind. It's important to know what chip you have and what you're building, especially if you're running custom firmware. Now, I do expect there to be some confusion when getting uh, the firmware from Creality's website going forward too, because they're going to have to account for both and uh, provide firmware for both. Uh, so I'm not sure if that's going to end up being a support nightmare for them or not. Um, but I guess we'll see how that plays out. And again, for now, this is only with the 4.2.2 boards. Um, it's hard to say for sure if this is going to impact the 4.2.7 boards at some point in time or not. All right, guys, so here's a slightly older version of the Marlin firmware. If you go over to the AutoBuild plugin, uh, which if you haven't used this before, I'll link to a video covering how to install it and how to use it. It's pretty useful. It makes things a lot easier. Uh, but go to your build panel. You're going to see the RET6, which is the 512K chip. And that's going to be the only option here. If you're running an older version of the auto build plugin, uh, it won't show the, the 512K here. It'll just end with the Creality. Uh, but either way, it's the 512K chip. Now, let me go ahead and close this. And I'll open uh, the one that I just grabbed from the bug fix line. So here's the latest from the Marlin bug fix line. If we go into the auto build plugin, you're going to see here we've got the 512K and the 256K options. Uh, so if you have the RET6 chip, again, you're going to use 512K. If you have the RCT6 chip, you're going to use a 256K. 
All right, guys, so that covers how to identify what chip you have and uh, the differences in Marlin if you're looking to do a custom build. As a recap, if you have the RCT6 chip, it's going to be the 256K version. If you have the RET6 chip, it's going to be the 512K. If you have any questions about anything we covered or like to see any other videos, go ahead and leave a comment below or join us on Discord. Thanks.